I'm amazed, church, and when I seen the topic, it's called free will, my first thought was, where do I go with that? And the topics clearly has not gone my way on this occasion, because where do I go with free will? And what's amazing is, from when I seen the topic, and I began to pray and I began to prepare a word. It wasn't until maybe a week ago, maybe a week ago, that God took me in a different direction, a different path. And I remember I was used to hear preachers say that they prepared something. And by the time it got closer, it, the, the time came to speak, God would give them a curveball and say, that's not the direction I want you to go with. This is the direction. And so I stand before you today with the topic. It's called free will. And God gave me these three terms. Freedom. Free domain. And free dominion. I said, before I go into the word, I'm just going to read the scripture. So if you have your Bibles with me, with you. The scripture is taken from Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Some of you might not need to turn your Bibles, but if you stand with me. God gave me this as a theme from the book. Each topic. And the scripture says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and need not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lead not unto your own understanding, but in all of the ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. I want to honor the word of the Lord by saying glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, now and ever shall be word without end. Amen. Amen. And I just want to say, if you know me, when it comes to speaking, I'm, I'm not the kind of person that can just speak fluently. So I'm going to speak through my experiences. I'm going to speak, you're going to hear a bit about my family uh, as I refer to them because that's where God showed me about the revelation that I have for this word. And when God around saying to God, free will, what is what is free will? What how how do how do I explain this to somebody who may not understand fully what free will is? And most of you who've been around young children or children that are at an age where they've gone through the whole party training thing and they're at the stage where they can't go to the toilet and they can go and sort themselves out. That's what my, my daughter does, she's at that stage. And even when she's at that stage, when she says she needs to go to the toilet, she will ask somebody, somebody who she sees who's greater, somebody with more strength, she says, can you come with me? And all you're doing is you're escorting her to the toilet for her to do what she needs to do and then come out. And I can think to myself, why does she keep doing this? She can do it herself, our living room's here and the toilet's right next door. Why did she ask, Daddy, can you come with me? Mommy, can you come with me? Auntie, Grandma, I speak to myself, why did she do that? But the scripture says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not onto your own understanding and in all of the ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy paths. And it came to understanding that as an innocent child, despite knowing and understanding the process of being able to go and sort himself out of the toilet, there still needed to be an element of safety yeah. when going to the toilet by themselves. And I thought to myself, how amazing is that? That sometimes some of the most simplistic things in church as Christians we forget. We forget that we're actual child of God. We forget even though we may be in an adult body, yeah. we forget the fact that we are still a child of God. Yeah. And whenever we go, whatever we need to do in this life, we still need to go to God first and say, God, can you just come with me? Because if you come with me, no matter where I'm going, I know, hallelujah, that not only will I make it there, 
but I'll be able to make it back. Hallelujah, Jesus. And it takes me on to the three subheadings, freedom, free domain, and free dominion. I know there's some of you who, who take notes, so if you do, they are going to be the three topics that I will work through today. And again, I'm going to refer to my children towards my children when I think of freedom. And I'll tell you a little story and then I'm going to uh, show you how it links. I know that as church brethren, there's people who want to hear the word. You don't just want to hear a story. You want to hear how scripture, you want to know why it's relevant. Um, why is this being spoken to me if there's no God present? So I'm going to speak to you about it. And it was actually just earlier, yesterday or Friday, and it was worth the Alpha, and I wasn't planning on going to Alpha, but I decided to go with my children so my wife could go and do what she does with Alpha. And when we was in Alpha, the, the, if you know, if you've been into the hall, you see there's the, the creche where they have Sunday school. And it's got lots of toys there, and the gates swung wide open. And my little youngest daughter, Gabrielle, she started walking, and when she seen it, straight away, she waddled over to it. She went in. And of course, I'm responsible for looking after her at that point. So I, I follow her and I go in and I close the gate and I secure it. And she goes around the room, she's playing with the dog, she's playing with all the toys, she's taking everything out. And after maybe 10, 15 minutes, she turns and looks and sees the gate is closed. And she goes over to the gate and she starts trying to rock it, trying to open it. And she realizes that she, she can't get out. And she sees a Myra, she sees a mom, she sees all the other people preparing for this party. There's music on outside and she starts moaning, she starts going, uh, uh. Yeah. I was watching, I was thinking to myself, what, what, what's she doing? She, she tried, obviously clearly she wants to escape, but she was satisfied, she walked into this. And I watched her and after maybe 20 seconds, she turned back, she looked at me, and then carried on playing with the toys. And she carried on doing that for a, for a while, she was playing with the toys, and it got to a point again where she tried, and she kept on doing this process, trying to escape, and then returning to the toys. Some of you may be thinking, I'm following where you're going already. <laughs> I'm following. And what began to happen is she got to a point where, when she realized that she was fully trapped and she was finished with everything that was in that room, she began to scream. She began to cry and cry and cry out and cry. And obviously, me being the dad that I am, I watched her. <laughs> I didn't open the gate. I watched and I thought and I thought to myself, God, are you speaking to me now? <laughs> Is this what you're doing? Is this what you're speaking? And the scripture came to me and I, I went and searched and tried to find the scripture. And it's James 1, 13 to 16. And it says, let no one say, when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. And he himself tempts no one, but each person is tempted when he is lowered and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived. My beloved brothers, I thought to myself, wow, this is, this is, this is real. Like, she really has. She, she walked into there knowing and seeing everything that was around her and she, she became enticed by it. And I know we're talking about a child, but this is what we do as Christians. This is what we do as people, unbelievers, but we become enticed by the, the things of the world. And, and we've heard it so many times, we talk about cars, we talk about money, we talk about those kind of lusts and, and relationships and how enticing it is that we, we go into it by our own choice, not by God, because God doesn't tempt us to go into it, but through our own choice, we enter in. And what amazed me is, I know it was me who put the gate on, but what we don't realize a lot of the time is that when we go into these situations, we become trapped. And the reason why we become trapped is because you've taken yourself away from what was God's will, what was his choice. And when it came to me, I started thinking to myself, wow, she's screaming. She, she wants to get out, she's desperate. And initially she was screaming, then she went back. And all that time, as, as, uh, for us as Christians, we find ourselves in a place where we go into what we think is good at the time, and we, we enjoy it while it's good. But when we get tired of it, and when it gets becomes a burden, 
We try to escape. We try to find a way out. We try to find our own way out. That's what she was doing. She was trying to fiddle with the locks and yeah. push hard and see if she could climb up over it. And she couldn't. We try to find our own way. And then what happens when it doesn't work is we think, oh, well, I may as well just go back. I may as well just try and, and enjoy and, and, and enjoy it while it's still here. And not long after, my other daughter, my oldest daughter, was out there. She's having a good time. My youngest daughter's crying, looking at her. And it came to the point where she got in trouble. And when she got in trouble, she had to come down and sit down <laughs> inside the same room with her, her sister. And I brought her to sit down. I said, sit down, don't move, stop crying. And of course, she, she cried. And so if you imagine the picture, she sat crying here. And the youngest one is at the gate and she's trying to escape. And I was thinking to myself, how much, how much does this resemble how sometimes we get to a place where we are in church? Where it's not just one person who becomes trapped in a situation, but other people become trapped and it becomes normal. It becomes standard. We're not trying to help each other. They didn't try and help each other. They didn't try and come together and hold each other and say, we can make it through. <laughs> they just acknowledged that they were both in a struggle and both wanted to get out. <laughs> Galatians 5, 16, 17 says, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. And I thought to myself, wow. A lot of the time we, we enter into these positions of being trapped and a position where we can't get out, where our freedom is limited because of our own choice. And here the scripture says, and it's God who's telling us, that it's not the way of the spirit. So we have spirit and we, we are flesh, but it's our flesh that takes us into this place of becoming entrapped. It's our own desire. It's not the spirit, but it's our flesh. And if we yield to our spirit, then our spirit will enable us to have the freedom. And what happened next uh, for me as a father was, again, amazing and also quite, quite humorous. Because what happened, now, of course, one child's crying and the other child's trying to escape and screaming. And all of a sudden, Sister Julie and Mother Hamilton from a distance came and started to approach the gate. And I looked and I thought, what's going to happen now? You can guess where I'm going. They came towards the gate and as soon as Sister Julie and Mother Hamilton came towards the gate, Gabrielle's attention went from trying to rattle the gate and try and escape to her hands being stretched out. She began stretching out and looking earnestly into her grandmother's eyes because she knew that there was a way and there was now a way out of the situation. Hallelujah, Jesus. And straight away, Sister Julie said, she's hungry. She needs food. <laughs> and Mother Hamilton said the same with Amira and, and they took they took them both out. <laughs> and what amazed me when I, I kind of sat there for a while and, and thought to myself, wow. But the gate was still closed. And, and that's what amazed me the most is that a lot of the time, as Christians, we, we forget. We don't see that our escape is right outside our gate. It's right there. Well, we, we, we stand right here, and our escape is standing right here, walking. And when will you recognize that I am here, and I am able to take you out, bring you out, pull you out of your situation. And I thought to myself, wow, not only are they being taken out, but they're being fed. Um, and I thought to myself, how gracious is God that even when you've done wrong, the, the oldest one's done wrong, she could still be in a position to have mercy where she could be taken out and be fed. And, be, and receive blessing. I thought to myself, wow, what a God that we serve. And that takes me on to John 10, 18. It says, no one takes it from me, 
but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father, and if you've read the scripture, you will know that he's talking about his, his life, his own life. I can lay down my own life. I can lay down my own free will. I can lay down my own freedom. It's by my choice. So when you enter into a position where you are trapped, and you come to church and you're thinking to yourself, I can't feel anything. I can't move forward. I can't go backwards. I'm just stuck. Yeah. It's not God's choice that you were there. It was your choice. And that same free will that you have and that you use to get yourself into that situation is the same free will you can use to get yourself out. Freedom. And Deuteronomy 31, 8 says, The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. And again, I say, sometimes you have to get God in view. I'm thinking to myself, you know the times where, as a Christian, you're, you're walking, or even sometimes when you're a believer, you're not yet fully submitted to God. And you have that position where you're warring between, should I go to church? Should I put on that gospel song in my car? Or should I listen to the radio? Or should I listen to Kemet? Or should I listen to whatever? What choice do you make? But a lot of the time, when it comes down to gaining the, free, the freedom, it's a lot simpler than what we, we think it is, that we perceive it to be. And that lead me, led me on to free domain. Um, when I was looking at free domain, I was thinking about, well, I was asking God, I was thinking about, well, what is free domain? What, what does this mean? Because literally, I was praying to God, and it came freedom, free domain, free dominion. I know they're not words. So I asked God, you need to expand upon this, because I don't know how I'm going to be able to speak this. And God said, when it comes to free domain, I'm talking about the environments that you put yourself in. Where you abide, how you abide, how you live, where you live, that's free domain. Now, the free will that we exercise to enter into this free domain can, of course, as I said with all the scriptures, based on either your flesh or your spirit. And I, I noted this down as risky positions, risk, risky positions. We must put ourselves in positions of risk, and that will determine the environment that we surround ourselves with. And again, I'm going to tell you another story about, about domain. And it was, it was a few months ago, back when it was really, really cold and icy, and Brother Junior was asking me to, to go out and help him move some, some furniture from uh, a house. That must have been half 11, 12 o'clock at night. Probably around that time. You probably ask yourself, why would I go out at that time? My wife and kids at home, ask for the junior. <laughs> but we did, and we went to go and move this all this, this furniture from the house to go and put it into a van. And it got to a point where we was moving a sofa down the stairs. And when we took the sofa out the door, we had to maneuver it around the corner and move it. To go, when we got to the stairs, there was it was tight, it was too tight for the for the sofa to go down, and Brother Junior said, let's slide it down the banister. So somebody at the bottom was either going to get hurt or was going to get destroyed. So instead we decided to try and usher it down the stairs, and it's quite tight. So we've got it probably about halfway down the stairs, and it's got jammed, it got stuck. And if you imagine the way that it's, we, we've, we're carrying it, I've got the, the sofa here, and Junior's further down the stairs, and. The sofa's resting on my leg, so at this moment in time, I can't get out. I've put myself in a position where I can't get out. And Brother Junior said, no, well, we, can, we can try and do this. We can move the gate at the bottom, and we'll try and wiggle it out. And so I said, okay, let's go ahead. Go <laughs> do what, you're in control. You do this. And what happened was, Brother Junior said, wait a second. I thought, why are you saying wait? And he ran backwards, and I ran forward and jumped onto the sofa, <laughs> and the sofa went into my leg, and immediately the pain 
became too much. I thought my leg was broken, I thought my leg was bleeding. I didn't know what state my leg was in. Um, but when I managed to get my leg out, you know when you, you, you've been, something's happened and you're in pain, and you go to check yourself, because you feel the pain is, is excruciating. And I checked myself, I was thinking, expecting to see bone, blood crushing. Um, I didn't curse him, I didn't curse him. I checked my leg and it was just a scrape. And I thought to myself, this is not justice for what's actually happened because there's clearly some deep tissue bruising here. And when I go and tell the story to my wife, so that's what she's going to do, she's going to laugh and say, it's nothing. And I thought to myself, that's not justice. But how many times, church, should we get to a position where the pain of what we're going through is not visible to other people, right. where we cannot be seen. We're trying to explain, yeah. I'm really struggling yeah. with this element of my life. I'm struggling with my job, I'm struggling with my relationship. And somebody will just say, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son that he may... And you think to yourself, that, that's, I need more help. <laughs> you just say the scripture, but I need more help. It's not relative to what I'm actually feeling, experiencing. And... I found myself in a position where I was, in, I entered into a domain where the pain was more than what, it, what was seen. And, bear me a minute, church. My wife just said, talk to her, I'm getting carried away, I'm getting carried away. The only way to ensure we avoid risky domains is to invite the spirit of God to domain with us. And I thought to myself, in that situation, had I exercised better judgment, maybe if I, if I brought my wife along with me as a third viewpoint, she would have said, that's not going to go down there. You have to try something else. You have to call somebody else up to try and move this. But that alternative viewpoint wasn't there. And a lot of the time what we do when we're in these domains, in these environments, the issue that we have is that we've gone into it, again, using our free will, exercising our free will, and we haven't decided to take God with us. We haven't invited the Spirit to be with us. And God gave me this revelation and he was saying, if, if you invite me in, I become part of you. I'll be like your heart. The heart that doesn't stop beating, but I will, I will be there. I'll be driving you. I'll be constantly there. And the importance, there's an importance when it comes to this combination of ensuring that you have this real relative relationship with God. And Proverbs 3, 7 says, Be not wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and depart from evil. Wow. And I thought to myself, wow, okay, so I, I, it's true. I, 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 not only do I, do I need you, God, but I cannot rely on the wisdom of my own eyes, my own flesh. I must fear God. And, and again, I'm going to say this to you because I know it, when I say fear God, I know there's some some younger people in, 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 the, in the room as well today. And when I say fear God, it means respect. Have reverence for God. Yeah. Have respect and have reverence for God. And that means when you invite him in, when that voice says to you, that's not right for you. Yeah. Turn the other way. Depart from evil. That's what the scripture says. Yeah. Depart from evil. And again, I refer to the, the fact that we should trust the Lord with all our heart and lean not unto our own understanding. And I thought to myself, God, that scripture, why have you given me that scripture? Because we're talking about free will. This is my freedom to make my own decision, my own choice. And I came and I came, God was saying to me, wow, you've missed it. <laughs> you've missed it clearly because I'm saying to you the key to freedom to have free will and to have free domain is to put me there. If you ask me to, to enter in, to have that combination there, then your free will will become godly will. Yeah, that's right. The freedom that you seek will become godly freedom. You will be able to go out and experience godly freedom. If you invite me in, you will be able to be functioning in godly domain. And I thought to myself, Wow, okay, so I, the fact is my free will that I have, that you've given me, yeah. you're asking me to trust you entirely with all my heart so that my free will will become your will. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
I finally came onto the point of free dominion. And when I was thinking free dominion, straight away I thought it's, it's about domination. It's about me, human, being in control. I need to be, uh, be powerful. And God was saying again that the free dominion comes again from the same point of the, the free will, the godly free will, that you have godly dominion. And when I was praying, I want to read this, it says, uh, the word that God gave me is that it's, it's the most undervalued elements of some of our Christian lives. Free dominion. We forget as Christians that we have inherited a godly dominion due to our royal lineage to the one king who created and is still the functioning ruler of this world. Yeah. And I thought to myself, free dominion. Free dominion. And that, what that means is that when you are deciding your career or your life or the relationships you have or the decisions that you come towards in life, God is saying, I have given you and you have inherited godly dominion from me. So this world that I created, once you decided that you was going to submit to me, your life, you have inherited this godly dominion. And I thought to myself, it's, it's quite, quite, quite funny, it's quite humorous. And uh, in John 14, 12, 14, it says, uh, Verily, truly, I, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name. So that the Father may be glorified in the Son, you may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. And it hit me again. It hit me again. Free dominion. I was thinking to myself, it's clear, God, that when we think about free dominion or that free choice or that, that power that, that you have enabled us, it's not only something that we, we must ponder, but it's something that is clearly in your word. And I remember when we was being ordained and the song was playing while I was being while I was being prayed for, and it was order my steps in your word, yeah. dear Lord. And the scripture comes from, from Psalms 19, 30, 133 to 135. It says, Order my steps in your word, Lord, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Deliver me from the oppression of man, so I will keep thy precepts. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant, and teach me thy statutes. And I was thinking to myself, wow. Do not let any iniquity have dominion over me. We need to have godly dominion, so that godly dominion rules over us. So that we in turn are able to exert that godly dominion on the decisions that we have in our life. And I thought to myself, again, if you know me, when it comes to aviation and flying, I will have to relate everything to, to flying, to being a pilot. And God gave me this analogy, and it was that we all have the opportunity to pilot our life. And that's the free will that we have. We have the opportunity to plan and select the route, to plan the, uh, the route that we shall take to get to the destination that we, that we have, that we want to get to. And what God was saying is that if you take off and you do not get clearance from the controller, you're going to get into a lot of trouble. You're going to meet a lot of storms along the way that you couldn't predict and you're going to end up meeting and, and causing friction and crashing with other aircraft that you were not aware of. And God was saying that I am the controller. You need to refer to me. And what, what really amazed me is that when it comes to actually planning and setting a flight plan, pilots, no matter how much experience they have, no matter how much training they have, when it comes to setting their flight plan, they have to submit to the controller. They can't just say, okay, I'm going to get up in the plane, I'm going to ask you as I go along. They have to submit it first to the controller, to the one person who is in full control of the skies and say, is this a direction that I can go? Is it, is it safe for me to go and reach this destination today? Is this, what, is this safe? And the controller will say, no, there's, there's actual issues at this destination. You can't go, or whatever. And what it was, again, I, I don't mean to bore you with this pilot job. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. But 
when it comes to, to planning the route, when, the, when it gets to the, the uh, submitting, once the controller gives you clearance, what the controller is saying is once you have taken off into the skies, there is not one single thing that will prevent you from reaching that destination. So when we think and we hear about the news of terrorist attacks and plane crashes and all these unforeseen circumstances, the controller is saying, once you have got into the sky, I will guide you all the way. I will guide you all the way. And what God is saying, order my steps in your word. What we need to do, church, is make sure it's an essential that in, to ensure we have our godly free will, our godly freedom, our godly free domain, and our godly, uh, godly dominion, is that we submit everything to God and say, God, as I step forward, as I take off, as I begin my journey, yeah. hallelujah, Jesus, I will submit everything to you, God, because I know if I, if I ask you to order my steps in your word, and that was the clear thing for me, is because I know that everything that I have and, and that I've experienced in my life, the downs and the ups, is that there's been times where I've missed the fact, I've said to God, order my steps, but not in your word, God. It has to be in accordance with what I want to do, not just in your word. If your word is, is complementing what I want to do, then fine, I'll go in your word. But if it's not complementing what I want to do, just order my steps in the direction that I want to go. But if we submit fully and entirely to the controller, to the Alpha, to the Omega, hallelujah, Jesus, the one who said he sacrificed his son so that we may have life, so that we may have the opportunity to tread and get to the destination that we would like to go towards, the destination that God has predestined us to go towards, then we shall truly be able, hallelujah, Jesus, to exert this godly dominion, this godly domain, I keep reminding myself, this godly freedom. Hallelujah, Jesus. It hit me, church, and I, I know I'm close to going over time. But when I used to think when I was younger, when God used when I used to hear the fact that people used to say to me, I knew God knows the plans He had for you. And He knew you before you was conceived. And I used to think to myself, well, why when I go through life do things do not go the way that I would like it to go? Why do I still experience heartache? Why do I experience lows alongside the highs? If I've fully submitted to you, Lord, I'm expecting greatness. I'm expecting to be happy. I'm expecting this joy that you said I will retrieve from having the fruit of the Spirit. And God just took me back to that point. He said, order. I will order your steps. In my word, yeah. I will lead and I will guide you every day. Hallelujah. The song says, send your anointing, Father, I pray. And I just want you to know, if you, just, if you don't remember anything that I've said today, just remember that. When it comes to your free will, when it comes to the freedom that you desire from the situations where you found yourself in bondage, when you think about the environments that you're in that don't reckon, reckon, uh, don't complement or resemble the things of God, or what you think God should have, or what you think the expectations that you are having God, the goodness of God, turn to God and ask him to order your steps in his word and to lead you.